Hey guys, this is Tobias. I just wanted to share this uh, quick little asset for you. I'm going to make this uh, free for you. It's a uh, simple, basic motion graphic uh, sort of studio for Redshift Render inside of Houdini. And uh, just sets up a three-point lighting studio for you with a uh, couple of psychs in it and uh, some controls that you can uh, use to just sort of get on with your work. Um, I made this because I found it was really kind of tedious to set this up um, every time, so I just thought I'd... Uh, Go ahead and make something for you guys you can have for free. Uh, so when you get it from the download link, you're just going to want to install from an asset library. Uh, hopefully you save the asset into some sensible place in your local machine and you just install and create and this becomes available. Um, one thing you will have to do um, in your local scene is to make sure that you have a Redshift uh, render operator set up. If you don't have that already set up, just go ahead and uh, click the Redshift button and it will set up the outputs for you. And you just have to go to your output and uh, make sure that you'll get these two nodes here. You'll get the ROP and the IPR. In the IPR, you want to make sure that you drag this ROP to the linked ROP. That way, when you run the IPR, you'll get a uh, you know a correct preview of what you're doing here. But let me do a quick little uh, setup for you. So this is a studio. I'm going to go ahead and create another geo here with some test geometry in it. I'll just do the shader ball for you guys. Make this a little bigger. The studio is kind of large, so uh, you know, give you some possibilities there. All right, so uh, here we go. Let's go ahead and start up the render view here. And ah, I made one mistake here. So here's the thing that you need to do as well when you set up your render operator. Uh, the Asset actually comes with a camera already set up because I built in some camera controls for you. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you come into the the render operator here for Redshift and just change this camera to the. Uh, you won't be able to see it here, but uh, you'll have to go into the asset and set it as the render cam. There's a render cam inside the asset. Just hit accept, and then uh, you're pretty much done with that. All right. So just going back to the object level. And then uh, what we'll do is just get back to the uh, preview here. Render view. And there we go. <clears throat> okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of get this uh, back to where we were with the uh, tool here. All right. Once we have that set up, uh, now we can go through all the controls. Okay. So, it, like I said, it just has a couple of uh, studio types. Now in Redshift, you do have to hit the refresh button. Uh, to update geometry anytime you make geometry changes and this is an actual geometry here so you know whenever we talk about that we have to do that everything else should work just fine now so uh, there's uh, three soft boxes uh, left and right and then a top one and they are targeted to an invisible light target here uh, in your world so you can actually move the light target position around you know however you want and uh, I don't know if you can see the reflections there but the actual uh, lights are shifting based on the position of this light target. All right, and uh, you can control the colors of the lights, of course. And uh, this isn't always on top type deal with the render preview, but uh, let's just say we wanted to go with a typical, you know, uh, orange and magenta or uh, orange and uh, cyan type deal with the top light being white. There you go. You got something like that. Can control the intensity here of the lights, of course. All right, and here we can control the render cam focal length. This is what we set up earlier. And again, you have to hit the refresh button on the IPR to see those changes. Um, one of the other things I added just for a quick little uh, you know, benefit is to add a little breakup on the backdrop uh, or the psych, you know, depending on whatever you're using. Um, you can turn it on, adjust the scale of it, uh, how much is there. You know how dirty that is. You know what I mean? If you wanna, that's a little too much, obviously, but you get the idea. If you wanted to do that kind of thing, just to break it up, you can also change the color of the background. You know, it's up to you how you want to do it. All right. And uh, last thing I did here was just add some reflectiveness as well to that backdrop. And there you go. That sort of gives you an idea. So yeah, um, just a simple setup, um, but it will save you a ton of time when you're trying to just do some really basic you know, motion graphics visualizations if you have to do a quick little demo for somebody. 
um, then here you go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a link available to this in the description of this video. And uh, I hope it comes in handy for you. All right. Good luck.